going on guys look who's out here with us today we got some steel to unload because we're starting a new project so we're gonna go ahead and get this unloaded and as scary as it is Bridger's gonna drive the truck We've got some equipment ramps. So these are ramps that are going to mount to the back of a semi-trailer. And they're going to be loading heavy equipment on them. So they got to be pretty stout. So this is the drawing the customer gave me. And we're just going to build it to how they want it. He wants them as soon as possible. So we're going to get started cutting the tube first. So let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna get a cut list together. And what I like to do is I'll just go through the drawing. We know we're gonna start with the tube. I'm gonna go through and make a list of everything that's tube that I need to cut. We'll go ahead and write that down and then we'll go over to the saw and start cutting. Okay, we got our cut list over here. We're gonna have Bridger, bashful Bridger, start cutting material. Ooh, look at them guns. Yeah. Okay. So while he's cutting material, he's going to start by cutting the long pieces, which are 80 inches, and then I'm going to start cutting the angles on them. So as soon as he gets the first one done, I'll be outside on the forklift cutting angles with the torch. So let's get after it. Okay, so while Bridge is over there cutting these pieces, I'm going to start cutting the angles. I haven't decided yet if I want to plasma cut them or flame cut them. But I got my angle finder here, my protractor, whatever you want to call it. And I've got the long ruler in it. That is a 12 degree angle. So that's pretty steep. So what I'm going to do is set it on the tube. And then I take this other one and use it to make up the difference. So then I'll mark it. Got my sharp soapstone here. Okay, so I got my mark on here. That's a 12 and a half degree angle. So, after thinking on it for a minute, I think I'm going to try the first one with the plasma. It may be quicker and cleaner, and I'm not burning oxygen and acetylene, so let's uh, let's give it a try. Got a bunch of ruffians out here. <laughs> okay so you can see here we're back in the shop 
I don't have a cord long enough or a plug close enough to the door that I can use this outside so I moved back in here you can see I'm using my cut guide marking one side rolling it over and then cutting the other side I did decide to change this later on you'll see that I'm using a different system a little bit later I got tired of moving the flat bar in the magnets but it did turn out pretty good I was happy with the quality of the cut so I just cut these one by one and then lined them up on the table figured I'd cut them all first and then clean them up with the grinder after Alright, quick update. I started using a piece of angle and a couple hand clamps for my cut guide. I got tired of switching the magnets on that because you run out of room as steep of an angle as that is. So this is quicker and it's a lot more sturdy. That way I don't have to change the magnets over to the other end every time. So I just take a measurement. Then go ahead and clamp it down. Move to the other end. Double check. And send it. guys we're back out here tonight we do have all of our pieces cut for our ramps it's time to bust out the grinder my favorite we're gonna go ahead and get those all cleaned up and then we'll start laying out the ends for the holes we'll just get them laid out and then I'm gonna start cutting all the pieces that go in between I can start kind of setting them up and just kind of I can't tack anything because I've got to punch these holes but Bridger's supposed to be home for football shortly and he wants to come out and work. So I'm gonna start getting these all cleaned up and ready to go. He's gonna come out and start cutting the short pieces that go here in between them. I think I'm probably gonna start cutting that round bar and machining the bushings that go here. Hopefully I can get far enough that tomorrow when my whole hog shows up, I'll be able to get the holes cut drop the bushings in, weld those out. Once I get the bushings welded in here, then I'll be able to lay everything else out and tack everything up and then get to weld. So that's where we're at. I'm gonna go into warp mode so you guys don't have to sit and watch me grind for 15 minutes. So let's do it.
here's where we're at. These are all cleaned up. See, we got them all ground smooth. I've squared them off the best I can, and they're all really close. I feel pretty good about how they're going to turn out. So that's as far as we can go right now on the long pieces because we're waiting for our whole hog so we can drill a two-inch hole so that we can drop the bushing in and weld it on both sides. But we got Bridger cutting on the saw. He's cutting the round stock so that we can machine the bushing. So he's cutting the round stock right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to face it off on both ends and then I've got to drill a hole. I'm actually waiting for the customer right now to respond to my text just because I want to make sure to get that center hole right. I don't want too much slop because then they'll sit and bang around but we don't want them to be too tight either because a lot of times when you have mild on mild and it's too tight once it starts rusting it kind of expands a little bit and then they lock up and you have all sorts of other issues. So if there's a little bit of a gap you can grease them and they run real smooth and you don't have any issues so I'm just waiting to hear from him I got the first one here in the lathe and we're gonna get turning whoa that is way out of round so we're gonna go ahead and face them off get them nice and square I think I'm also gonna just hit this mill scale real quick so it drops in nice to our uh, through our holes. Get out. Get out. Okay, so you can see that hot rolled it's pretty it's not super round but we just want to get it as round as we can and I do want to check it just to make sure that we are and I like to check it a couple of ways so we're five under there five under there so that's I feel pretty good about that I'm going to chamfer these corners so they're not sharp and lethal. And then I'm going to flip it and do the same thing to the other side. I like to turn my tool into the work just a little bit with this kind of insert. Okay, so the length on these is not extremely crucial. There's nothing up against these faces. So if we're within five or 10 thou, we're good. All right, well, we just got that board out. The only problem is that took an hour to machine. That right there took an hour times 10. So yeah, that's not going to work for us. So I'm going to call tomorrow, see if I can get some hollow bar that's already inch and a half on an ID and two inch on an OD. And I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, we'll just use pipe. But the problem is I want the ID to be exactly inch and a half and pipe is not exactly inch and a half on the ID so I'm gonna see what I can find tomorrow and see if I can get a chunk of it so that I can machine 
these and try to save us some time because that's going to take forever. But if I can get that tomorrow, our whole hog will be here tomorrow. We'll be able to drill the holes. I'll be able to get these dropped in and hopefully weld it out. And then Saturday morning, hopefully I can start laying these out and getting them tacked up. So that's the plan. That's about all we can do tonight at this point. It's also 9 o'clock and I have to work in the morning, so. And these yahoos got to go to school, so I guess we're going to call it a night. See you tomorrow. What's going on, guys? We are making some tracks tonight. So, we got us some VOM. I was able to pick that up today. So we're not going to have to spend all that time to machine this. It's just another one of those lessons learned. But that's our DOM and it's exactly the size we need. The ID is actually 50 thou under, which is exactly what we were machining it. And the OD is 2 inches, so that's, that's exactly what we need. So we're just going to have Bridger keep cutting these. We'll speak of the devil. Look who's out here today. <laughs> Goodness. And the other good thing we got going is our whole hog showed up. And there's the pins for it. So what we got, there's our whole hog. It's got carbide teeth on it. And these babies cut a hole like you can't believe and it's nice because it's like perfectly machined it's a perfect two inch hole so our DOM should slip down in the hole perfect we don't have to spend all the time machining those now so we'll get the rest of the DOM pieces cut I'm gonna start laying these out and I'm gonna drill those and we should be able to make some decent headway tonight once Bridger gets the DOM done I'm gonna have him <clears throat> for anybody that doesn't know what DOM is, it stands for drawn over mandrel. And you can see there's no seam in this. So the way they manufacture it, it's not like pipe where it's got a seam where they welded it together. This has no seam. So this is this is made specifically for things like bushings and stuff like that. So that's what DOM is. But Bridger's going to get the DOM done and then we're going to have him start cutting the smaller sections that go in between and we'll see what we can't get done tonight. Let's do it. Time for today's super cool tool. Okay, so for today's super cool tool segment, we're going to be talking mag drill. So this mag drill here takes annular cutters. They make a couple different kinds. They make mag drills that will accept just a regular twist bit. But this mag drill takes annular cutters, and this is called an annular cutter. So what you have is you have your cutter and then there's a center pin and the pin goes down through the bit. So you have a center pop in your steel. This lines up perfect in your center pop and then you get a perfectly centered hole. These cut a perfectly machined hole. So they are just, it's my favorite way to cut a hole because they cut such a clean hole. And honestly, it's pretty effortless with the way the mag drill works. So if you look here, this is the set that I have. These are all annular cutters. And they go up in 16th inch increments. And if you take care of them, they'll last you quite a while because they're so hard. I think these ones are high speed steel. But typically they last pretty long as long as you keep your 
cutter oiled up and you just go nice and slow so how this works is it's got a magnetic base on it and we'll go ahead and lay this first one out and just show you how this works so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lay this out I had to look at the drawing to make sure that I laid this out right so we're gonna lay it out here Sometimes when that cutting fluid's on that steel, it doesn't want to mark very good. We're going to mark our center. And this needs to be as close as possible. Because you've got an inch and a half steel rod going through five of these. So it's got to be right there. It's got to be close. Okay, so then I take my center punch and my hammer. Now we've got a center pop or a center punch mark. We're going to take our bit here. These better be right or I'm going to be pissed. Well, because then you can't cut with them pretty much. It's not going to work right if they're not the right size pins. But I'm not, I'm not liking what I'm seeing here. They're not. Okay, so some sophisticated specimen at the tool store that I ordered these from gave me the wrong size pin so because they gave me the wrong size pin this has slop in it so that's not really gonna work for us so I think I'm gonna put it in and try it and just see if it will spin true to where this is in the center I don't think it's gonna but I'm going to try it and just see because there is a chance that it could maybe center itself. That is not good. <clears throat> Alright, sometimes you just got to stick it to the man. So, we're going to make our own pin. I got a piece of stainless in here. It's a little big so I'm going to have to turn it down quite a bit. But we're going to make our own pin, just make it the same dimensions. It's not going to have this little spring loaded thing on the end, but it's not going to matter cuz the length I'm going to cut it's going to be it's going to be fine. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and face this off. Alright, 5 16 is the diameter of the pin, so we got to take it down quite a ways. I'm going to try going 30 thou first and just see how it does. Obviously, we're getting a little bit of chatter on the end, that's normal. You should get a little bit of flex out here on the end. Okay, so this is going to take a while, so we're going to go into warp mode.
you can see we've center drilled it and put our live center in. We were getting too much flex on the end and I need it as straight as possible. So we've got it set up now with the live center and we're getting close on our measurement here. Take about 18. Wow. We slowed down our feed rate to get a better finish. So once I get this diameter right, I'm going to go ahead and machine the head down until it's about 3 8 diameter. And then I'll slide it in and bite it here and machine the point on the end. Okay, so the main body of the pin is done. I've tapered the neck here because that's what this one has and I think that helps center it exactly. So we're going to try it. I am going to put like a 60 degree taper on it. I'm going to have to machine that where we drilled out the center. I'm going to have to machine that down but shouldn't be too big a deal I hope. This feels like one of those nights where you gotta do 50 things to do one thing. Like build your own tools that you shouldn't have to. I think we better scoot this in. I'm gonna part it off right now. Okay, we're slowing it down. Coil it up. Bingo! I'm just going to go ahead and machine that little piece on the end of there off. <laughs> Chamfer that real quick. left to do is the point. So I've got my compound here set to 60 degrees. Okay so we got our pin all machined. It's got a tapered head on it and there's our point slides in there pretty good you can see it sticks out the end we're going to put it in the drill and then this is how you attach the bits now that we've wasted half an hour to build a tool that we shouldn't have had to okay so that pin is spring loaded okay so then i'm just going to bring my pin you can see it's spring loaded there's very little movement there. I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with that, I think. Okay, so then I lock the... If you look back here on the drill, you got your magnet button, your go button, and your stop button. So now we're ready to cut a hole. Okay, so we got our cutting oil here. We're going to start it. This is pretty noisy, but you just want to keep it nice and oiled up. Keep constant pressure, but you don't want to push too hard, and it should cut through there like butter. So I just want to show you guys. I like to use these. 
I like to use just a pair of pliers to get the shavings off because they're like razor blades. Okay, so that first, you can see it just leaves a hot. You can see it just leaves a little cube on there. So it just cuts a perfect hole. So now we're going to go through the other half. Okay, so there's our hole. So now let's test it out. Okay, so we got our piece of DOM here. As you can see, that's a that's how that's gonna go right there. The rod will slip through there, and that's our hinge point. I'm going to take and put a weld on both sides of those. I do need to put these in the lathe and machine the middle out just, just a hair. I checked it and he wants a little more slop in there. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that there's enough room. And then the other good thing about that is if they are a little cockeyed, it shouldn't be an issue. They'll still slide through there. So. All right, so that's our mag drill. Super cool tool. It cuts extremely accurate holes. And that magnet is stronger than you would think. There are a couple different types of mag drills you can get. Milwaukee makes one that'll take a twist drill and they are really handy for drilling and tapping. I've tapped a lot of holes with that type of mag drill. But they are a fairly pricey tool. This tool here runs about $900. Um, they don't come with any bits. A set of bits will cost you a couple hundred dollars. So they are fairly expensive, but if you're into fabrication, they save you a lot of time. You can punch a really accurate hole really quickly. They do a great job. So this one here definitely made our list. So let's get back to the video. Okay, I'm going to show you guys why it's important to get the right cutting speed when you're cutting metal. So, pay attention to the difference of how it sounds and looks when we cut it on the mill versus with the mag drill. We're going to cut all these holes with the mill because the mag drill spins so fast with a bit this big, it vibrates when you start and it's walking off of our center pop, so that's not good. These have to be as perfect as we can get them. So just pay attention to how smooth this cuts now. You can see it's nice and smooth, nice and quiet. It's cutting good chips. It's not making noise. through one side right there. So then I'll knock this coupon out. Now I've got to cut the inside. Give it a little shot of oil in there. Okay. So speed when you're cutting metal is everything. And when you only have one bit and you need to make it, and you need to make it last for 
10 pieces but it's really 20 cuts because you're cutting through tube two layers it's important that you get the right speed or you'll smoke the bit so this is going to work out a lot better on the mill let's see if we can't get these done All right, so we've got all of our ramp pieces drilled. We are working on cutting the pieces in between still. And then if you come over here, we've got our pieces of DOM here and we are boring those out. We need to bore them out about 35,000 just to give enough slop there that our customer, when they put them on, they don't have an issue with them binding up or anything. So I've got eight more to do. Bridger's got a whole slew of pieces to cut still, so that's where we're at. All right, so we're out here into the wee hours of the night trying to get as much done as we can. We got our DOM all machined. It's bored out, 50 thou. And then I went ahead and chamfered them. Looks better. And now you don't have that sharp edge to drag your knuckle off. And then Bridger's got these pieces all cut up. He's doing a fantastic job. And he's only got, I think, three more to go. And then all of our parts will be cut and they're all prepped up, ready to go, so we can start tacking and building. So we did good tonight, kicked some butt. So tomorrow we've got quite a bit going on. We got football, softball, and it's the opener of the youth duck hunt. So we're going to see if we can't hit that. We'll be heading out on the dirty dabbler so we'll see if we can't get some video of it we'll catch up tomorrow all right good morning guys it's another day we're just out here working on getting these all prepped up i'm gonna see if i can't get some of these pieces of tube put in here and weld it out so i'm gonna take my little reamer here ream those holes out make sure i deburr them and and then see if we can't get them dropped in and welded out. So that's where we're at. Let's get her done. Okay, so these are really tight. Like I can't, I can't get them in there. So I did throw this back in the lathe and just shaved off the coating on the outside. And they're still a little tight but they're perfect to where I can get them in there. And then I'll just tap it with a hammer till it's 3 8 I'm reaming it with my reamer and then I'm taking my little flap disc here, cleaning up the holes. So that's where we're at.
Okay, so what we'll do is we'll get all these welded out. And then the customer, I believe, has the inch and a half rod that slips through here. I'm going to ask him to bring that over so that when I fit these up, I can slide that rod through there, make sure that they all line up right before I start tacking the cross members in. That way I don't get it all welded out and they're not lined up and then I have an issue. So that's my plan. Alright, so we got all of our bushings tacked in. We're going to go ahead and start welding these out. Once we get these all welded out, we can go ahead and start fitting these. So let's go ahead and see if we can't get these knocked out. Okay, I just want to go over a couple things that I'm doing while I'm welding these bushings out. So we're welding them up with dual shield MIG, CO2 for cover gas. We're running about 25 and a half volts and about 320 on the wire speed. To get a good looking weld here, I want to have as little stops and starts as I can. So I figure I can probably do this in two passes. So I'm just going 180 and then 180. Now when I do this, so I like to start on the right side, pull towards me, and then end up pushing away from me on the left side. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and weld this out, and then we'll take a look. Okay, so here's the other thing I'm doing. I got my pipe stand here that I'm using for an armrest. Anytime you can get an armrest to make yourself more stable, I would say do it because you end up getting a prettier weld. It's usually a more sound weld because it looks better, it's cleaner, and it penetrates better. Okay, so then I clean up my slag on my start and stop. Okay, so I'm going to run this other half. This is what it looks like when I'm done. So you got all the slag, there's some spatter on there. You can see it doesn't look all that great. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my wire wheel and I'm gonna clean it up. And then after I clean it up with my wire wheel, I'm gonna take my scraper here. This is from Fireball Tool. If you haven't seen these, you're gonna wanna check those out because that right there is a sweet freaking tool. So I'll take this and I use the scraper and I knock the spatter off. Okay, so then when I'm done, you see how much better that looks. The spatter's all knocked off, it's clean. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just repeating that process. Now I gotta flip it over, I think. Oh, that one's done. I think one of the things that can make you a better welder is you just need to care. You know, pay attention to your starts and stops. You can see the start and stop on a lot of these. You know, you wanna make sure you fill it in. You wanna try it, make it as consistent 
as possible. If your starts and your stops are good, if you take the time to clean the spatter off, hit it with a wire wheel, clean it up, people are going to notice that. So, anyway, just a pointer I wanted to throw out there today. Okay, so we got these all welded out. I think I need to get a hold of the customer and see if he wants these ends capped. That wasn't on the drawing, so I'm going to text him real quick and find out. Um, I'm assuming he's probably going to, so I'll get those welded out and then it'll be time to start fitting them. Stay tuned. Okay, so I texted the customer. He does want these capped. I've sheared a few pieces of inch and a half flat bar, quarter inch thick. We're gonna weld these up open corner. So, just like that. And then we'll fill that in. So, that's the plan. Gonna get those tacked up right now and hurry and weld them out. I'm gonna see how it goes with the dual shield. If it blows through, I'm going to switch over to short arc and weld them up with that. Alright, so we got these knocked out, all capped, cleaned up. So, we are ready to start fitting. I'm going to clear all the crap off the table because we got to have as much room as possible. And then we'll get laying the first one out and fitting it up. Here we go.
Okay, guys, this is where we're at. Got this one all laid out. The customer brought this bar over. We were having the conversation about how we should probably have something in the bushings so that when I start welding it, it doesn't warp. And I asked him if he had the hinge piece, and he didn't, but he did have this bar, so he brought it over. We're going to use it just temporary to fit this up and weld it out. And we're ready to start tacking. Um, everything looks really good. Everything's nice and in line. I've checked the measurement. The measurements are right on, so feeling pretty good about it so far. We're ready to uh, start tacking, so that's what we're going to do right now. together. It's looking good. We're ready to weld this out. I don't want to move this around too much before I get some weld on it. So I'm going to hit all of these first and then once I hit those I'll flip it over do the same thing on the other side and then I'll be able to start working on all of these. I'm going to bounce around quite a bit. It shouldn't move too much because this is quarter wall, but I'm still going to bounce around just, just to cover my butt. So, All right, let's see if we can't get them welded out.
Okay, we got this sucker all welded out. I just ran the uh, bar through it. Still runs through. It is a little bit tighter than it was before, but I fully expected it to move a little bit. So we are good though. It will slide through. So that is the structure for the first one. So I'm going to probably get this one on the floor. I'm going to get the other material slid over. i got to clean the table off because there's all kinds of spatter on it from welding that up. So I'm going to take this one off. Do the same thing that I did to this one, to the other one. I'm going to get the material on the table, go ahead and get it welded out and get both of them to this point. I'm going to start working on the top pieces. There's a piece that goes across the bottom of these on the bottom. So I'm not going to bore you guys with a lot of the same stuff. So I might try to get a little bit of different footage of me welding this up. But I don't want you guys to go to sleep on me. So I'm going to go ahead and get that other one put together and We'll go from there. Okay, we're back at it tonight. We're gonna try to get this plate cut and ready to put on our ramps. We've got our straight edge set up on here, sitting up on the forklift. We're gonna go ahead and rip this. It's 36 inches wide and 80, 80 inches long. So we're gonna cut it to here. And then we gotta flip it, cut it there. And it looks like I'm gonna have to go get another piece of plate. I'm not sure what I was thinking, but I didn't realize that this wouldn't be enough plate. I guess I didn't realize they were so long. My mistake. So tomorrow I'm going to have to go pick up some more, but let's see what we can get done tonight. It is officially go time on the ramps. Did get some more material so we can finish out the top pieces. We're gonna get this one on the table all knocked out. I've already got the top piece cut for it. I do need to cut the bottom pieces for both of these. So that's the plan. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna get those cut. We gotta weld those on first and then get our top piece on and then Put the expanded over that for traction so we're gonna see if we can't hurry up and get these done i'm hoping i can get them done before noon that's four hours from now so let's do it
so the bottom plates all fit up you can see I got the welds on the ends here got her clamped down tacked up tight looks good I was thinking about running short arc on this but that dual shield runs so fast and as long as I keep it small like that I think we're gonna be just fine so we're gonna go with that Okay, one base plate's down. Stayed pretty dang flat. So, gotta flip it back over. Start welding the top plate on. Okay, we're all tacked up. We're all tacked up. We're gonna go ahead and start stitch welding this. You can see here, got our stitch welds all laid out. That's where we're at. We're gonna see if we can't get it welded out. Move on to the expanded.
All right. Whew. We got one down. The last thing I did was I rolled it over and put a couple stitch welds down the center tube just to give it a little added support. A lot of times stuff like this when you drive equipment up and down it all the time that plate flexes and then it'll snap the tacks and stuff so that'll just kind of help keep everything tight so that it doesn't move. So that's one. I got one more to do. So see if I can't get this done before noon. guys she's all finished up we may not have made our 12 o'clock deadline I think we're close enough I can still load them up and haul them over to the customer so I got three rows of tacks here 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 so, and then it's completely tacked all the way around Hopefully that should give him enough gription, if that's even a word. We're going to get this one off the table, out there on the trailer, strap him down, and head out. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you on the next one. Actually waiting for the customer to respond to respond okay so for today's super cool tool we're talking mag drills mag drills are a super handy tool a super cool tool and the reason that super cool tool the reason that mag drills are so cool I don't like the way that sounds start over
Okay. <laughs> okay, so we got our peen. We got our peen all machined. Wait. Okay. Okay, so here's our hole. Here's our hole. Okay, so. 